Watch it, watch it. All right, we are we are live. Oh, are we? Once once again, we are live, and so hold on, hold on. That, are we live? We are live. I welcome I you into uh, the beautiful Foxworth Ohio studios here in downtown Cleveland. Thanks for clicking on, of course, Foxworth Ohio's Facebook Live page. Uh, I am, as you know, Allie Clifton. He is Richard Jefferson, and why is that? As you know, uh, you know, Allie Clifton, and then he's Richard Jefferson. As you know, I'm Richard Jefferson. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, he's a little short fused today because um, our flight after a great game in Boston, we'll get to that in a minute, we have to, uh, because you left the locker room last night not doing any post-game interviews. So. I was there for hours. We were there for an <laughs> extra hour because our plane wasn't ready. Did you pull the Tim Duncan? No, I didn't. I had, play, I had plenty of time. No one wanted to talk to me. Okay, well, you're here today. We're going to talk. But he's got a short fuse because we landed about 3 o'clock this morning. I just woke up a couple hours ago. <laughs> However, what time did you wake up today? I woke up at 5.30. I woke up at 5.30. I had a bunch of stuff to do, but we'll get to that. Right now, there's only one thing that is trending, and it's Channing's tip dunk. <laughs> Channing got a tip dunk last night that I'm going to say this. So I've been dealing, you know, a couple games ago, I missed uh, uh, a couple of games just for knee tendonitis. Wink, you know, the NBA doesn't want us resting their superstars, so I can't say I rested. <laughs> so... Channing, you know, it's been documented his inability to jump and catch tip dunks, and so I was on the Which bike. Which he will say himself. Oh yeah, he sucks. Yeah. So I, I was, <laughs> I was on the bike, riding the bike, you know, you were. away from the bench, <laughs> and Channing goes up. We're making this run. Channing goes up, catches this one arm tip dunk. I get off the bike, walk all the way to the court to start yelling at him. It was so impressive. And there is a a new video. Um, I don't know if you guys follow. Um, our Instagram uh, uh, road tripping. So our guy Golden Hoops makes these amazing videos. We send him clips. He takes clips from our uh, podcast, puts them to some video in the audio. And so we have a new clip that we are going to put up there and it's called Channing's Revenge. So we're really excited. About How that. exciting was or excited was Channing? How did he handle himself in that huddle? Because I was at the other end. And so by the time I got there, the celebration had already been done. You know, it's one of those things where we get hyped and he gets hyped for like, like he gets real <laughs> aggressive. Yeah, yeah, he gets hyped for like 10 seconds and then he starts giggling. <laughs> he starts giggling. <laughs> I told you my, my bunnies were good and I already just started saying something off the wall as everybody that knows him <clears> very <throat> well, um, they, they know what he says. But yeah, it's pretty off the wall. What do you think about last night? I know you didn't want to hype it up. You downplayed it as 16 years in the league would you know, allow for that to be the case. No, but. it was, it was, you know, it was fun. It was a fun game. No, it's, we could, okay, let's put it this way. Had we not played as terrible as we've been playing in March and uh, really since, you know, February, mm -hmm. like if we were just playing 600 basketball, which isn't great, instead of 500 basketball, we would have had a five game lead last night and that game would not wouldn't have, have wouldn't, wouldn't or have been what it was. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been anything. So, um, we stand firm with it's about us. It's about how we are playing. If we are playing well and we are healthy and mm -hmm. we are focused, we believe that we're the best team in the NBA. And there's other people. Golden State believes that. Houston believes that. San Antonio believes that. So there's other teams. So this is not something that's out of the ordinary. But last night we had, you know, Kyle back in the lineup. JR is feeling better. Uh, he's getting his legs underneath him. Kevin is getting his legs underneath him. So we played a good basketball. And we didn't shoot great from three. It was off a of back-to-back. Tristan goes down. This was not an ideal situation. And we played a good game, and we were fortunate enough to get the, the victory. But it wasn't like we weren't in the locker room spraying water on each other. <laughs> two, two things before we get to fan questions um, that I want to ask you. Number one, why are you and LeBron so effective in that back door? In why the are you killing our secrets? Well, okay. But it's not a secret. We watch it. Um, this is I why. actually was going to ask you in our halftime interview. But you didn't care about that. But um, I didn't care, too. <laughs> no, I think, one, he's one of the great passers mm -hmm. uh, probably in the history of this game, his ability uh, to throw the ball in great places. Um, I, I think for me, I, I've always – because when I first came into this league, I came into this league, it's called Princeton Offense. Okay. So we were one of the first NBA teams to really fully run the Princeton Offense. And it's all about slicing and back cutting if you're denied – slipping so there's a lot of movement in that and so for me 
uh, I've been doing that pretty much my whole career, cutting back door. So I, I try and do a really good job of setting guys up and, and cutting back door in different ways. And it's just like a feel. Um, uh, similar to, you know, guys catching lobs. And it's like that. the Kyrie to Tristan Lob or the Deli to yeah, Tristan Yeah, you just, yeah, Deli to Tristan Lob. They just yeah. see each other. They see that defender come up one step and you know they're, they're in trouble. And mm -hmm. so um, teams, especially when Channing and I are on the floor, because mm -hmm. Channing is a better three-point shooter than me, uh, they try and put the bigger guy on me. So they'll put Frank Kaminsky on me. They'll put um, um, Olenek on me, which they're dead in the water in the sense that, like, no, but just because a big guy can't guard all of that stuff. They're not used to guarding quick guys off the perimeter. So it's like as long as, as, long as I make a hard move or as long as I set the screen, like even Justin Smith, if you keep putting bigger guys on me, mm -hmm. it's going to put them in a bad spot because they're going to have to guard me cutting back door and going for lobs. And if you put them on Channing, you have to worry about them getting pulled in and then Channing shooting threes. And I, I think that's why our second unit is, is really, really been successful. You have LeBron passing. We added Darren. You got Kyle that can shoot the ball or JR or Shump, you know, doing a, a really good job on the defensive end. And then teams are trying to navigate who do you put the big on. Do you put them on Channing and worry about three-point shots? Mm -hmm. Or you put them on myself and have to worry about cutting and them chasing me on the break? Which kind of goes into my next one then, because Tristan uh, goes down. What questions do you have? One more. Tristan goes down last night, RIP to that 447 consecutive game streak. That's tough. Yeah. But he goes down last night, and one might think, oh, you know, if you're Boston, the load gets a little easier because he's an energy guy. You know, yeah. you're not chasing. But you guys then space the floor. Yeah, we space the floor. And that's, that, that wasn't, they, they decided to go small. Yeah. And so when they decided to go small, which we Indiana tried that against you guys? Orlando tried that? Three straight games, and you guys. Yeah, don't, don't, like, we, <coughs> we don't try and go small. The best small team. <laughs> well, no, I, I say this, in that, and if that is their strategy, that's what they feel is their best opportunity. Mm -hmm. That being said, probably the best small team in the history of the NBA, uh, Golden State Warriors, who just won 65 games for the third consecutive season, uh, we beat them in the finals with them playing small and playing their dominant, dominant lineup. So we're very, very comfortable in playing small. Uh, it just, you change your mentality. So now I know I have to rebound better. I know I have to box out bigs. Le they're going to probably have to put a small on Braun. There's just, you just have to change your mentality. Uh, and, and that's probably the strength of our team is our versatility. It's just letting guys know that you can do it different ways. We can play with Channing and Tristan and Kevin. We can play with me, Braun, and, um, and say Kyle at the three, four, five. So it just, you know, it gives us versatility. That's it. And I'm tired. <laughs> you talk a lot. I, hey, do you think that... Uh, I drank a lot of coffee because, like she said, I, I, I haven't slept. And I was drinking a, a competitor's coffee, so I had to chug it. So I apologize if I'm chattier than normal, which is impressive. Guess who is on his way? Gelman! <laughs> so Gelman! Yeah. If you don't stop, I give her... Sit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we got a couple. Gelman. Nice little handoff there. Uh, no, I mean, if you do that oh. again, I promise you, I promise <laughs> you, this is going to be. Brandon to wants to know, do you have a hidden talent, Richard? No, all of my talents, I'll tell you. You just got to ask or just be around me. Really? Yeah. What hidden, hidden talents do I have? Um, I don't know. Exactly. I tell you what, I can, I'll tell you a hidden talent. I can't multitask. Is that a hidden talent? Yeah, so put your phone down. Amy wants to know. No, I'm going, because Gelman is being mean, so I'm going to Fox Sports, <laughs> Ohio. Wants to I'm, know. I, I'm going to Fox Sports, Ohio right now, and I'm going <laughs> to go on to the thing. So you guys can send okay. me questions directly. <laughs> Talk to me. I'm tired of this. Oh, look, in my recent searches, go figure. Hey, that's me looking at my phone, looking at me, looking at me. That's kind of awkward. Hey, Richard, Amy wants to know, is little Kev coming back? Uh, little Kev, yeah, he, I, like I said. What say, has little Kev been doing? He's, he's like us. He's done nothing in February and March, <laughs> right? No, you guys had a really good February. Oh, he's like us. He's done nothing in March <laughs> and nothing in January. I think January and March were our, our terrible months. I had hibernate so, in January, too. Um, that. <laughs> <laughs> so is little Kev coming yeah, back? Yeah, uh, little Kev, yeah, he's coming back. He's got nothing else going on. Uh, uh, he likes to winter um, in uh, California. Uh, oh, he's he's out in Hermosa. No, no, no. He's here. oh, he's here. He's hanging out. He's just being grumpy. He's just like the rest of our team, very moody and grumpy, <laughs> including myself. Who's the moodiest? All of us. Just depends on our day. Okay. Uh, Chris wants to know how are you guys feeling with playoffs around the corner? 
These are terrible. Chris, that's a terrible <laughs> question. That's, that's, that's a terrible, like, Chris, Chris, if you want those, if you want those <laughs> questions answered, oh, well, oh gosh, that was, that, this is, this is legitimately live. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Let's go to comments. You guys how are doing are, a great job. Wait, how wait. are you guys feeling, Richard? How, Give the wh fans what they want to know. How are we feeling? We, we feel great. Um, this is very tr untraditional to be looking at a phone. Um, who is the uh, wackiest on the team? Ernest Jones. Hi, Kai Kim wants to know Harden or Westbrook. Uh, Kyle McLaughlin wants to know, Allie, will you marry him? Uh, <laughs> Lena, Lina, uh, Lina, you know, show us your underwear. That's uh, <laughs> I'm wearing. See this? Look, I'm wearing. Hey, this is a Kyrie Irving. This is a Kyrie. This is by Baywatch. <laughs> this is okay. this is by Baywatch. <laughs> this is a Kyrie this, Irving live. Yeah, so this, and is, this is a live. Yeah, PSD. Uh, um, yeah. With that said, Omar Aquino <laughs> wants us to. See, he's like, yo, say my name. Okay. Hey, do you know what that song is? What? Say my name. Say my name. Who? 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 Who sang who, it? Who? 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 Destiny's job. All right, what does that have to do? Come on. Hey, uh, Sergio, they're not interviewing me. This is a show. This is a show. <laughs> this is the. Is, he, is this, Sergio mad at you? Yes. He's like, why are they always interviewing Richard? This is not an interview. This is Richard's audition for Kelly Live. Sergio, thank Kelly you Live. for coming. This, this, this is for Kelly Live. This is Richard's <laughs> audition. Why? Julia wants to know, uh, RJ, why do you hate bobbleheads? I will oh, say this, cool. the last time I messed up the bobblehead, Ali got so mad because they were supposed to get like 10 guys to go and give comments. And the last time I didn't really cooperate with that, so I broke Channing's head. Cause, Are you surprised? Yeah, because they just ask us silly stuff all the time. Because number two as well, it was Channing. You're always so mean to Channing and you just dropped him. Okay, now that you've been working with Channing now directly for two months, I just want, no, 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 wait, 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 Jan, wait, three months you've been working with Channing directly doing the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Have your views and opinions changed about Channing and working with him? You're going to lie? <laughs> You're going to lie? <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, exactly. He's the funniest I've, guy He is the is. funniest guy, but I've also known the guy for 20 years. All right, Drives I have me nuts. It. Okay. I love him. <laughs> Christy, will, will we see you at an India uh, game this postseason? Which postseason? Ooh, did you see that? Season? Well, obviously you didn't see it, but did you see the Grand Slam last night? Yes, I'm so oh. glad the Grand Slam. By the way, we were, what game was it? Who was the Indian, who were the, the Red Sox playing? Pirates. Pirates. Oh, oh my this. God. It Richard was so, last night in Boston. Oh, so in the, we were in there doing media, and it's just, so there was a, a comedy bit. I, I forget the comedian. And he was just like, baseball is so boring. He was like, let's evaluate baseball. And I'm not saying this is a comedian. This is not me saying. He was just like, it's so amazing how nothing can happen in the game and it can be, um, and, and it could be an amazing game. What happened? It was 0-0 in the 16th inning. It was amazing. And you're like, is that really <laughs> amazing? And he was like, yo, it was a perfect game. And it was like, what happened? Nothing. It was like the, the, the idea of a perfect game means nothing happens. That right there is, that's just tough for me. Okay, so while we are doing, waiting for the big three to come out on the wall to speak in post game last night, Richard, with Gatorade in one hand, pizza in the other hand, decided to come out to the hallway, and it's a very tight knit hallway. We're very cozy out there. And everyone's getting a little short fuse because they They're need waiting. to go write their stories and, and so forth. But nonetheless, we're waiting, and we are graced by this guy who decides to come out and announce that. What? What did I announce? Oh, that the, that the Red Sox won on a home run? Yeah. And I missed it. I literally <laughs> walked away for 10 seconds. I went to go get more pizza because our plane was late. And I walked back, and they're like, oh, by the way, they hit a home run, and the game's over. And I'm just like, <laughs> this, this really, what the hell? What the hell? So. But hey, you're going to uh, make an appearance at... Some Indians games this year? What it, what, see, this is a, Christy, this is the thing. When you say this postseason, are you mean our postseason in this summer or next, next, next season Indians when they're postseason. in the postseason? In the Indians postseason? Damn right. Come on. <laughs> that, that was, man, we just kept the party going. <laughs> and I will say this, I'm, uh, I'm really stoked now that I have a better understanding of the Indians uh, and some of their players and the returning players. Uh, it's going to make it even more fun. We'd like to get some of them on the road trip and podcast. It's any, hey, Indians. Andre. Any of you guys want to come and hang out with us on the podcast? I, how about this? How about you guys tell us, uh, because Channing is tough to get at home uh, because he has a life. Um, <laughs> we don't. So uh, if you guys tell us who you think would be the funniest co-host uh, and then hit him up and tell, uh, tell him to come and co-host, and then we'll start interviewing some Indian players.
Oh, that's really good. That's kind of you. Don't patronize me. Do you hear a voice? <laughs> oh, that's that a good That would be idea. really fun. It's like, it's yeah. like I'm a two. Yes, yeah. Gelman. You got more. That one's out of here. There we go. Favorite game of character. Favorite Game of Thrones character. How'd your bracket do? Favorite place to eat in Cleveland? Does Kyrie still think <laughs> Richard is flat? Who is the yeah. flat on the cast roster? Those questions are gone. Richard. Have you ever considered growing your hair out? What is your favorite? Who's asking you these questions? Dylan, Dylan, Dylan <laughs> wants to know. <laughs> no, it's not Dylan. It's Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. He spits hot fire. Um, uh, uh, K Dove, who was your? What was my favorite moment in college? Favorite moment in college was definitely playing in the Final Four. We got robbed. Those questions are done. So what? What do you want to talk about? Ask me about the NCAA. What about it? Ask me if players should get paid. Oh, well, if you haven't followed Frank Kaminsky or Dan Dockett, ask me if on players should get paid. Twitter, there's a, a heated discussion. Ask me if players should get paid. That Richard is offended. He's not a part of. So ask me if let's players get should get into paid. it right now. Do you feel players should be paid in college? It's funny you ask me that question. Because right? I can have an opinion as well. Yeah, I, you're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. It's funny you ask that question. Yes, I want to say right now, players should get paid now. We don't know how, but you have to open up the conversation. Before something like that can actually happen, the conversation has to be started. Now, as we roll up our sleeves and we talk about the hypocrisy of what we would like to call the bullshit uh, NCAA. Now, NCAA, Nick Saban gets paid $7 million. Where would money come from to pay players? I don't know. John Calipari, 6 or $7 million. Where would money come from to pay players? Michigan football team. Three of their assistant coaches are making over a million dollars. Where would money come to play players? I don't know where this money why would come do, from. Why do players, it's not where right now, why do you feel that players need to be paid? I feel like they do so much for the university. Now, it, it is not, not going to be a perfect system, but something needs to be happening. There are guys that deal with concussions for years after their college their careers are done. There are guys that deal with knee injuries, and this NCAA assurance does not last. Even a player like myself, they asked me if I would, um, like I tried to go back to school and finish my degree. So I tried to go back, I applied for some, some classes, and it was after the withdrawal date. So all of a sudden I started, I got sent to collections because I did not pay for a computer class. This was years after I donated millions of dollars to my university. My university sent me to collections for $2,500 for an unpaid class that I did not fully enroll into. And when I tried to contact the athletic department, they were like, oh, well, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the academic department. It's like, oh, so you guys don't work hand in hand? So I was a little annoyed about that, mainly because I how felt. How hard did you try? I didn't, what do you mean? How, how hard did I in try? In terms to, of fate. Well, what it was is that it was a computer class, and they were like, well, you need a, a, a laptop. And I was like, mm -hmm. can I do it on my Mac? And they're like, no, you need, a, you need a desktop. So it started going back and forth. It just became a little difficult, and the season had just started. So it was whatever. But. Back to the main point. Yeah. Athletes, it's not about getting paid. Like, I understand Ivy League schools. I understand smaller Division I schools. I understand that, that um, the money is not necessarily always there to pay all of these athletes. But there are schools where these athletes and, you know, uh, Arizona basketball, Duke basketball, North Carolina, Kentucky, the these schools, schools. The, the power schools are making so much money off of these guys. And if they don't pan out, if, and the other part about it, this is the most frustrating thing for me. You t if you say, well, go be a professional, they took away that opportunity. They took away kids' opportunity. No, you, Gelman, you come <laughs> here. They took away kids' yes, opportunity. The they, they, they took people's opportunity away to go straight to the pros. Mm -hmm. Why? They don't, have any they don't have any regulations for kids that want to go straight out of pros in tennis. You can go straight out of pro in baseball. You can do it in golf. You can do it in, all, you can do it in swimming. You can do it in all of these sports. Just go straight professional. But in basketball and football, the sports that make money, there's regulations for when you can turn pro. So it's like if a kid wants to turn pro, he can't. He can't go to the NBA because they have the one and done rule. College players have to stay in school for three years. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, they're making this money off of these kids. And if they do the wrong, if they take $50 to go get an extra meal, if they take $100 to fly home for a friend's funeral or to get a suit, they are ineligible. And then they're, you know, viewed as a problem and it just becomes this big ordeal. And I just think, I think it's unfair to say, and you will be able to speak on this, you said this to us on the podcast that your senior year, you're missing Thanksgiving 
and you're like, I'm not going to go play in the WA, and I'm missing this, and I'm missing that, and it's, you know, at, you still love it, but you're just like, geez. Why, okay, so let me raise you this. Why is, and I can only speak from my own experience, obviously, and I played at the max, so I'm not one of your power five teams. I'm not one of your power teams, right? Okay. But why is a free education, Okay. a monthly stipend, Okay. not enough? I'm not saying that because it's not. Because you're nearing the end of your MBA career. Yes. Here you are in year 16. Okay. And you are going to have a great understanding that you there is life after sports. Agreed. So why, why can that not be the focus? Well, why is wh that not enough? Agreed. And why, is, why can they not cap college football coaches? Why can they not cap college basketball players? Mm -hmm. why, is, why can't you just tell Nick Saban a million dollars? A million dollars is enough. And it's like, no, it's like, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, I will, and his argument is like, well, look at how much money I make for the university. But it's off the backs of these kids. Mm -hmm. It's off the backs of these kids and, and the recruitment. And, you know, you get guys, there was a story on Vice not too long ago about these kids that get all these shoes. They can get hundreds of free shoes from Nike, from Adidas, from Under Armour. They get thousands of dollars worth of free gear because these schools want to brand them. My high school team, for instance, sponsored by Nike. We will be getting to your questions here in a minute. Yeah, whatever. We're, our, my high school team was sponsored by Nike. I went to a Nike-sponsored college. I went to the Nike camp when I was in high school, and I have worn Nikes every single game of my entire NBA career. Do you not think that Nike was trying to brand me ever since I was 15 years old? So we can start saying legitimately we're professionals because for, like schools can make money off of you. Nike can make money off of you from high school and saying, look at this guy coming to our Nike camp and it helps farm the next kid that goes to the Nike camp and it helps farm the next kid. And it's just like there's so much money being out there that kids need to be able to be given something, especially if they want to turn pro and don't get the opportunity. Obviously, it's a discussion that needs to be. No, we can have it all day right here, right um, now. Hey, this is a good one. I don't know. Obviously, you've been busy this morning. However, uh, with the Masters on hand, Dustin Johnson. Oh, that sucks. Oh, you heard about it? Yeah. You know what's going on? Okay. So have you ever, and I actually have had, have you ever had an injury, though, like him falling down the steps? Tell us about your injury. Um, I was a freshman in college. What'd you do? And it was frat uh, party, your first frat party. It was preseason. <laughs> no, it was the day before our first exhibition game. And I was walking back to my dorm, texting on my phone, and I walked into a light pole, and I got a concussion, and I was out until January. Your freshman year. Freshman year. That's when they say, "Hey, this girl, Allie Clifton, she we got it's a equivalent good one. to like falling down the stairs." Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, walking and texting. Anyways. No, I well, did. no, well, this is the thing. Uh, who was the? Who was the? Uh, what's his name? Uh, the pitcher hurt his hand playing with his drone. Oh, Bauer. Yes. Bauer? Yes. Okay, Bauer. Not to bring up bad things. Not to bring up this. I have a rule in my house. I don't do manual labor. <laughs> I don't. I, and I, I like, I, it's a rule in my house, and it's a rule that I, I don't have very many rules. As you can tell, I, I live a fairly lax lifestyle. <laughs> but there is a very, very serious rule in my house that I will get aggravated if I'm forced to break said rule. So these th type of things, I will send this to my wife, I will send this to my friends. I, I'm gonna send this article about Dustin Johnson getting hurt. You want something hung up on the wall? Call a guy, <laughs> right? You want, me, you want to move some furniture? Call a guy. If I hurt my back or if I hurt something, this whole thing, this whole house of cards is falling down, all right? I don't do manual labor for this reason. You can get your hurt at any time. You can hurt yourself. So when you add that, oh, honey, will you move boxes from the fifth floor to the first? No. Well, can you hang? No. And it took, it took a while for that to really seat through, and it, it still doesn't. Sense. It, it makes does make sense. sense. It does. Well, it just, it just, it just, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm laying bricks at my house, but when it's like, <laughs> here, <laughs> yeah, la no, that, that's not considered manual labor, but. Doug wants to know about laundry. What? Well, no. Well, I, but no, but that, but that, you could walk out. I, but I, you know, right another now. thing, I, you want to know another thing. I, and again, I don't want to come across as the wrong person, but. <laughs> but you're about to. I'm about to. <laughs> all right. Tons of people get injured every single year doing simple things like getting out of the shower. <clears throat> and, 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 um, and so, you know, are in, in the bathroom. A pet peeve of mine is when bath mats aren't down or our <laughs> towels aren't readily available. 
You guys laugh. <laughs> Everyone laughs at me, but think about this. Like, you know, if you have a pregnant woman and she's looking for a towel and she slips and hurts her back or slips and hurts herself, if I'm looking for a towel and there's no bath mats and there's no towels and you're tracking through your house and you slip and you break something, you slip, these are little things that you can avoid just by being, you know, like conscious. Don't do manual labor. Make sure simple bath mats are down. Make sure things like that are around. These are, these are, have you guys not seen Final Destination? Don't you know how death can chase <laughs> you down? Death can find you with the most simplest. I've, I'm a big fan of Final Destination, and maybe that's why I have these paranoias. But death is looking. Oh, don't show us your shoes. <laughs> don't show us your shoes. It's just a transition. Okay. okay. Uh, I actually like this one. Okay. Miguel doesn't have a question. Miguel, what do you want to know? He has an observation. Where's your observation? Observation. <laughs> observation. <laughs> Google that. Allie Cliff and observation. Can we talk about something about that in Boston last night? Sure. Okay, we'll get to it in a moment. Miguel says that you look like a teacher today. I feel like a teacher today. Um, I have my Ellen DeGeneres look on. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, you know, love Ellen. Th th I love Ellen. She's my favorite. Ellen, you don't have a co-host, or I'd be wooing you also, like I woo Kelly. Hi, Kelly. This summer, starting in about July 1st, I'm going to be free, okay? So um, I'll be really nervous, but let me know. Here's another comment, observation. Observation. Matthew says, tangent. RJ is my favorite RJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just I just kinda go. I don't I don't know. I I'm gonna be honest. So I um excuse me, I have really bad asthma and I've had it most of my life. And so I started working with this company, Boston Scientific, they do uh, a procedure. And so um, once we started par about partnering and letting people know about the procedure, they were like, hey, we're going to do kind of a media day where we just kind of sit you there and you're just going to talk to 25 different new me me <laughs> news outlets. <laughs> so we landed at 3 o'clock. I had a wake-up call at 5.30 this morning. Got there, did my first thing at CBS at 6.45, and I've been doing 15-minute interviews since then till I came here. And this is your best one, yeah. This is my best one, and so I've drank about eight gallons of coffee. I have not had a nap yet. I have not done anything, so I apologize if I am not my <laughs> sharpest. It's his behavior. Yeah, yes. Um, Jake, Richard, RJ, do the dunk contest next year. Yeah. I'm going to say this. Unless they do, yeah, even then, <coughs> If they do a 40 and over dunk contest. They should do a Vince and Richard. No, because Vince can still dunk better than me. He can go between <laughs> his legs. I can't do that. I never could. I am a game dunker. Gelman. Gelman. Oh. Got some good ones here. No, these are the same Michael. I'm going to. I'm going to. No, I'm not. getting it. I'm getting it. Hey, please. Michael. The guy that you want to be. Right hand. Who would win at a game of horse? Allie in Toledo playing days or RJ now? Um, Let's be honest. We played a game. Let's we played a game. Honest. We played a game. Didn't yeah, we? but you have to understand that I am also not a very good multitasker. We played a game. Ta just yeah, we played Fox. Yeah, but in my Toledo playing days, which oh you actually saw the highlight film. Yeah, not hey. Long ago. Check. Yeah. <laughs> we tagged her. We tagged her. Go go to her Twitter. It's there. Can you please go to her Twitter? Okay. Um, go to her Twitter. Anyways, so who do you think? How are you not verified on Twitter? I don't know how that works. People have asked me that and mentioned. I don't know how that works, but I don't care. Uh, yeah, add it to the list. No, no, it's okay. No, 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 please. I don't do. need that. Please do. Anyways, who do you think? What? Who, who do you think? Would win? If we went off of our shoes for today. Put your shoe up there. I have Chuck <laughs> Taylor's on. I think I, I would. Taylor. <laughs> um, okay, so basically I would beat you. Oh, that's bless her heart. Yeah, Allie would beat me. Okay. Uh, Michael also wants to know, who will be the enforcer during the playoffs? Are you interested I'd in rather talk about. Person? I'd rather talk about what Doug Hoffman wants to talk about. He wants to talk about, did we play beer pong at Arizona? <laughs> damn right we did, and we were damn good at it, too. Let me tell you a little, let me tell you, let me tell you a little bit about beer pong. So there's two Who did you play with so we can call them up right now and really get the scoop? Because uh, I Luke. don't know. If, Luke oh. was my partner. I could see Luke being very good at yeah, it. Yeah, now there's two different types of beer pongs. There's the throw beer pong uh, that you do, and then there's another beer pong where we used to play with cans. So we put four cans on each end of the table, and you would actually play ping pong. Right? So you play ping pong, and as long as it's still your serve, as long as you like score a point and they try, but the goal is to try and hit their can. So if you serve it and you hit their can and it goes off, like the table, you get to drink your beer until they get the ball back to the table and put it down. So once they put the ball down, you put the can down. Right? So. Sounds like a lot of rules. No, th there's two rules <laughs> hit the can and drink your beer. 
Gosh, Delito. So this is the goal. Gosh. So you hit you. So now, now, first team to finish their bear wins. And so the goal is serve it and hit the can. Now, if I serve it and it goes off, then it becomes your serve. So you're still technically playing beer. You're still playing ping pong rules. So that was our beer. So, you know, again, you can go crush their can, kill their beer, and then afterwards they have to stack up the next four beers. So that was the beer pong we played. So it combines table tennis and beer pong but not the cups. It's more for people that are good at ping pong and want to play and want to get drunk. So, you know, just <laughs> FYI out there for the 21 and olders. Uh. <laughs> Allie's, all, Allie's all flustered now. Uh, Roger wants to know, do you, <laughs> do you walk around in a ref reflection vest? <laughs> Get it together, I'm Allie. Sorry. It together. I really could see you doing that. Walking around a what? <laughs> a reflection vest. Why would you see me doing My head is shiny enough. I don't need anything. You're Why shiny. would I need a, a reflection vest? Yeah, oh, yeah, no. I, 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 Do you honestly, have one of those blinkers? Like, no, on your yeah, one of the, the, the <laughs> headlights. That's the thing. I don't, I don't do anything late at night. Like, people were like, oh, I was running at night. Why? Why? I don't, I, don't, I don't carry guns. I don't do any of that stuff. Anything that can be considered dangerous, I told you. I believe in Final Destination. Death can follow you. Put down bath mats. Just a thought. What's your favorite genre of movie? My favorite genre of movie? Uh, I, either comedy or action. Um, those, are pro those are probably my two, my, my two favorites. My two favorites, just because we're on the plane so much, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's just kind of mindless at that point in time. You just kind of just like, uh, whatever. Are you binge watching something right now? I am not. I am not. I've been binge watching Married with Children. I am not binge watching something, but I've been binge watching oh, Married with because Children. Because I've seen, I've, I, so I <coughs> Married with Children is one of my all time, all time shows. I grew up watching it. So I downloaded all the episodes. Um, it was like 12 seasons. And so it's just been on my, my, my iPad. So I watch it. And I'll say this. Are you ready for this? Everyone wants to talk about Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell. She was smoking hot. Don't get me wrong. I love Kelly Kapowski. I was kind of a Lisa Turtle guy myself. Was never a fan of Jesse. Never a fan of Jesse. Whatever. She, yeah, she was. She was too. She was a pill popper. She was a little dramatic. I was never a big fan one of her. episode. Uh, how many? You smoke crack one time. You're a crackhead. I don't know how this works, right? Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, then you know, again, but Kelly Bundy. Man, <laughs> she was 10 times hotter, 10 times hotter than Kelly Kapowski. Oh, my gosh. I go back, and now I'm watching this stuff, and it was just like she was supposedly in high school, and she was still wearing, like, skin-tight dresses and stuff. Whoever did that, great casting job. Christina Applegate, I've been a fan of you since I was this big. Love you. And you, she has never seen Anchorman, which makes no sense considering her profession, but I've asked her this multiple times. Why have you not seen Anchorman? Um... I just struggle to sit down in one spot for. But it, but it's relative. So unless you take me to a movie theater, I'm. It's not going to be shown in the movie theater anytime <laughs> soon. But it's not. It's just relative to what you do until you will find it human. Oh really? Yes. I can actually take things from that movie and apply it to what I do. One thousand percent. Oh really? How now, brown cow? <laughs> How now, brown cow? I like scotch. Scotch, scotch, scotch. <laughs> I'm right. telling you, Anchorman is an, is an amazing movie. Well, that escalated quite quickly. It did. Come here, Gelman. Gelman, no, Gel. Okay, now see. I, I think I think you greatly underestimate how bad I will tackle you. If you do that again. Yes, you should be. Alex wants to know. Let's stay on this this topic of style because I really like the reflection vest and the teacher comment. How does that feel? Alex wants to know. Richard, where did you learn to? And now this is up for debate. Uh, but where did you Baxter, learn to did, dress? You ate the whole wheel, wheel of cheese, Chris. That was really funny. <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. <laughs> yes. She doesn't get it. She doesn't get it because she's never seen the movie. Where, I don't even know what movie you're talking about. Where did you learn to dress with such style? Where, I don't, he I actually don't. thinks you have style. Okay, there's a difference between style and fashion, right? What's the difference? Shump is very fashionable, <laughs> right? Um, Tristan, very fashionable. Style is something that is very classic, right? I told this woman when we talk about style, uh, she was wearing an outfit the other day, and I was like, oh, that's very, that's a nice coat. That's very Jackie, Jackie o. very Jackie O of you. And she was like, I don't know what that means. So what do you mean you don't know what that means? She's like, 
<laughs> Wait, is that, is that a compliment? I was like, you don't know who Jackie O is? I mean, he's one of the most iconic female figures in the history of our planet, one of the most iconic fashion um, um, individuals in the history of our planet. I she had knew, no idea. No, no I knew that. I needed to know if it was a compliment coming from you. Do you like that style? I didn't know. You're, you're lying now. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> if anyone says that is very Jackie O of you, that is a compliment. That, okay. that just okay. lets you know. Okay. Yeah, it's like, wow, you look like Jordan doing that move. Is that a compliment? It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. a compliment. Okay, next question. Uh, three people from history to eat dinner with and can Dylon come? <laughs> Aww. You are bullying. Um, no, okay, again, no. if you've ever three watched, no, it's history. you. If you ever watched Ch uh, the Chappelle show, Dylon, Dylon, Dylon. <laughs> and they think I'm bullying you by saying that. That's probably how your name is pronounced. Someone caught it. Okay, thank you. There's other intelligent people out there. I think <laughs> like I think we're gonna have to change. You, 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 I think I think this was. Um, go ahead. <laughs> with three people from history. Yeah. Would you eat dinner with? And can Dylon come? <laughs> Dylon. Because he spits hot fire. Dylon. Yes, Dylon can come. Okay. So who are the other three um, people? I don't know. What? I have to think about it. Ali, that's what this is. The, we're I, on, I'm we're thinking, live. Richard. Oh wow. Who would you take? Give me one that you. No, would take. no, this is about Allie. We're not going anywhere until Allie comes up with the three people. <laughs> the sewers run red with Burgundy's blood. Everyone is now sending quotes from this movie that Allie has not seen, and she is in the media. If she says she's not media right now, I'm going to throw this card at her. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to think of who I would like to have dinner with. Okay. Why does it have to be from history? It, it could be made. Uh, it could be the tooth fairy. This is made <laughs> up. There, there's no. There's no rules here. What are you talking about? Because there are three people in today's world that I would love to have dinner with. There, you know, if they're living today, they're a part of history. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. mm. Vince Vaughn. Okay, that's a good one. Number one. That's funny. Guess what movie he's in? <laughs> Anchorman. <laughs> In well, Anchorman. Well, maybe he can. Maybe oh, he can maybe. Educate wow, me. that's funny. Vince Vaughn. Yes. Number two. If you say Will Ferrell, I'm going to lose my shit. I'm not going to lie. Oprah. Oprah's a good one. And number three. Um, well, God. And thank you. And that's the latest edition of Facebook Live. Number three. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, you can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. It's, yeah, oh, you want it's me? up for debate. You want my three? I don't know. Uh, the three people that I would eat dinner with are Dylon, Dylon and Dylon, because he spits hot fire. What about Kelly? Oh, Kelly knows. We, it'd be, it, you know, she's married, and so am I. But um, we would have a great couple's dinner. We would talk about our. I would ideas. probably go with Justin yeah, Timberlake. Yeah, see, she interrupts me every. Justin uh, Tim Timberlake. Timberlake. Yeah. See, you can fangirl over Justin. I'll fangirl over. I'm not Kelly. fangirling. These are three people that I would really love to have dinner with. Okay. Yeah, Gelman. Gel, don't. Okay. Gelman knows the way. I swear to. <laughs> All that is holy. I'm really, I'm really impressed with your energy today. Me? Yeah. Oh, me, I'm on straight fumes right now. Oh. Mike, do you sing? No, no. Mike wants to know, do you sing? No. Tell him. Tell no. him. You don't sing. Can you dance? No. <laughs> I can drink. I'm, you ever spot me out? I can, I can drink and I can, I can lip sync in a club if it's really loud, but singing and dancing is not my thing. Natalie, thank you. She loved my nails. What do you think of my nails? <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, Ian, when and where would you go if you could travel back in time? When and where would you go? Uh, I would go back to um, uh, Jesus at the cross. We know that he's not a mythical figure, right? That People was like, deep. <laughs> I'm just saying, we know he's not a mythical figure. We and, actually, and you and I have something in common that we didn't know. Because we kind of did that, uh, kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Wait, was that on the podcast where you thought I was lying? We both yeah. went to the Athletes in Action camp. Yes, um, different times. Yes, different <laughs> times. I think, we're not sure, but I went back and talked, uh, I went back and talked to the camp, and we're kind of in between, because Maya Moore was at the camp that I went back and talked at, 
that you said she was there with you, right? Well, obviously, your speech wasn't very impressive because I didn't remember it. So No, I don't, I don't think I went and talked like that to the oh. entire group. <laughs> I just went there and kind of went around the day. I think they, you guys were doing the ultimate, is it the ultimate challenge? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So uh, you guys were doing that. So I didn't, that was the day of the ultimate challenge. So I was kind of there. You guys were all scattered around. And what he's talking about is we went to an Athletes in Action camp back in college. So it was for a bunch of athletes from around the country that came together, obviously, yeah. to... Um, intermix, intertwine faith with sport, and it was it was really cool. Yeah, it was no, very, it, was, cool. it was really really awesome. But it was a 24-hour challenge that basically pushed you oh, so that's, much. That's physically. okay. No, someone said that someone said someone said they locked saw my lock code. I don't I don't I don't care. Do you understand? My two-year-old son knows how to get in here. It's like he knows how to open up everything. You guys want to see? It's it's zero seven zero seven zero seven. Good luck with that. <laughs> No, so my phone's broke 19 times, and so the screen doesn't work, and so neither does the thumbprint, so I just gave the easiest code out there. It's not much. Um, hey, we also talked about aliases. My aliases on the road was Mustard Beat Ho. <laughs> mustard on a beat, oh. So much for the athletes in action talk. Anyways, Ryan wants to know the story on the tattoo. Uh, which one? Which one? Seriously. I uh, know. Um, I, have, I have something better. No, can you please answer Ryan? Well, Ryan, Ryan. Let's talk about Ryan, you why you would no, put Ryan, RJ you can, you can on Google, your body. You can, you can Google this, Ryan. I'm telling you, there's um, there's a lot of stuff um, that we have. Favorite place to eat? Does anyone? Hey, oh, side note, right here. Remember hey, no, Glenda, when Glenda King had a great one. Glenda King and I. You know and that emoji? Like this one. That emoji where it's like you're rolling your eyes. Yeah. Okay, Glenda. I like that question, and we're gonna ask Allie that right now, Glenda would like to know, do you like live bands or live music? Um, to be honest with you, when I was deciding the music for my wedding, I, we almost went with a live band That's over awesome. a DJ. Did yeah. you go, was it, was it like the 80s band that, that then like the, I forgot what their name is, but they do it all like the cool 80s music, no? Yeah. Okay, maybe not. Uh, what was the last live concert you went to? Lop. Live concert? Eric yes. Church. Eric Church, Eric how Church was that? Oh my gosh, Tell us amazing. about it. Right. Any of you guys at the Eric Number Church Number one, the one thing I will tell you, a big shout out to Quicken Loans Arena because they provide, I don't know if it's just for Eric Church or if it's for all their concerts, but they provide a pit area, which is for select however many people that they can put down there. And you are right there on the stage and next to these performers. And for Eric Church, I've gone to it twice now. Mm -hmm. And I've been in that section and he works the stage so well mm -hmm. that you just feel so much a part of his, his performance. Eric Church is so good. Is it Let's add like it to the list <laughs> of the dinners that <laughs> I went to. There we go. See, now Allie's opening up. This is not, see, this is, the, this is where you guys misunderstand. This is not Allie interviewing Richard. This is Richard and Allie <clears throat> talking with you guys and wanting to know. So I'm glad. What is your second, what, is the, what was your favorite concert you've ever been to? My favorite? Probably Bruce Springsteen at Wrigley. Wow. Yeah. I saw Bruce Springsteen at Giant Stadium. Wow. With Bill, with Bill Walton. <laughs> oh, Lord. I swear I went with Bill Walton. Uh, I think we were doing some stuff for the NBA, and he was just going to be there. So me, Luke, and Bill went and saw Springsteen in Jersey. It was Springsteen you got a lot incredible. of incredible. Uh, the fa my favorite. So I've seen, I, I'm a big, Brenda, I'm a big. Glen, isn't it Glenda? Glenda. Glenda. <laughs> Glenda. Brenda, Glenda. I They're cousins. <laughs> Brenda asked the same question. So Brenda, uh, like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. Uh, I also love uh, live concerts. I've seen a ton. Uh, I think that's that's something that should never go away. I think you should really, really, it's an experience that you can get. I, I've seen Lauryn Hill. Uh, I've seen Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, if you want to go with how we've been saying <laughs> people's names. Uh, my favorite, though, that I've probably seen most recently, I've seen Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, I didn't even know that I knew so many songs. But I've seen Jay-Z, I've seen Lil Wayne, I've seen You went Eminem. to the Kanye concert. Went to the Kanye concert recently. Oh, uh, speaking of that, guess who's here tonight? Who? Uh, I think I just saw that. Is it 50 Cent and somebody else? Who else is Chris here? Chris Brown. Chris Brown. At the queue. Yeah, I just saw him on an episode of Blackish. It was yeah, probably we really fun. probably. Um, what? We got more questions going? Oh, she wants to segue oh. away from that. I, I, if you walk by me with it, you're not going to make it past me. Just trust me right now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> one to you and one to Al. Oh. See? <laughs> I'm being fair. Okay, that's fine. Oh, you, you gave her 12, and then you say you're being fair by giving me one and her one? Yeah. 
Gelman, you're gonna, you're, Gelman, don't get on my list. Short, it's a very short list. <laughs> it's a very short list. Like, bad people are on my list, I'm telling you. Yeah, seriously, it's like very, very bad people, like Hitler, Stalin. Okay. I'm saying these are people that I consider bad. You don't want to be on that list. Has anyone been able to ever control you? Was it been like, it can you be controlled? It's your definition of control. <laughs> and I'm like a two-year-old. If I don't get my nap, all hell is going to break <laughs> loose. Uh, Coach, Lou. Coach Lou? He just no. doesn't talk. He just doesn't acknowledge uh, Coach, Coach Lou ignores me. Yeah. He, he ignores me. He doesn't. And he played with me, so he knows me as a person. And he knows, he just, Richard, whatever. <laughs> oh, so um, wha what do I eat on game day, Ian? I don't like that question. Uh, Caroline, who is my greatest influence? That's good. That's a good question. A little too thoughtful, so <laughs> I don't really want to go into that because, you know, obviously my parents, like that type of stuff, yes, but that's not <coughs> the point. Who is my favorite comedian? Great question. We just lost a comedian today, right? Who? I've been, in, I've been like in a, in a tank all day. Somebody passed away? Oh wow! One of the one of the icons of comedy, yeah. Rickles, he 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 used to be at a worker room. They said he's one of the best. That's that's impressive. I listen to so I'm a big fan of like uh, on Sirius XM. They have Raw Dog. Um, they have and that's a, actually a comedy station. Uh, uh, they have <laughs> <laughs> they have um, they have Laugh USA. Did uh, we they just have spike? Com they, have com <laughs> they have comedy. <laughs> Speaking of spiking, uh, they had so they have a bunch of stations, and so I listen to all I listen to all of those stations, and so I love comedy stations. So uh, Patrice O'Neill is one of my favorite. Mitch Hedberg. It's really weird. I, after I started to like a comedian, somehow they pass away. Um, I was a really big fan of Mitch Hedberg. He is hilarious, and I was listening to him, listening to him. I was getting his tapes, and then someone told me he's like. You know he just passed away like a year and a half ago, and I was <coughs> I was like devastated, and I just started liking the guy like a month prior to that. Um, but I love comedians. I'm always looking for uh, new guys that are awesome. Um, do you right. have a favorite comedian? No, I don't. Um, wow. We've got. Apologize. I do not though. Um, but we've got one more, and I actually really like this one. So can you not <laughs> shut it down? Uh, there's uh. high probability I'm gonna <laughs> shut this down. Um, I like it because number one, it's from Allison. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Cleveland? Oh, gosh, there's so many. <coughs> My favorite thing about Cleveland, it, it's, my favorite thing about Cleveland is that we won a championship here. That, that's my favorite thing. Uh, I think this did city was as starved for a championship as our entire team was. So I, I feel like that hunger matched um, us. And so we are forever indebted to them they are forever indebted to us um, and that is a that is a bond that a city will have with players um, not to bring up you know sore things um, but you know obviously the Chicago Cubs and you know the and what they did for their city I still feel like what we did was greater uh, from the standpoint of um, we showed them the way to come back from 3-1 and I'm sorry Indians fans it's it's, it's never too soon and I think because of LeBron's connection with the city, LeBron's connection to the city um, and what he did as an individual, I think that is something that makes it that much more special. You have your hometown guy that was your leader that came back and said he was going to do something, accomplished it in spectacular fashion. So that's my favorite part about, about Cleveland is that we have a connection together. So I've never really spent any time in Cleveland, but now it's, it's my favorite place on the planet. You know, Cavs fans knew me from a distance, but, you know, hopefully, you know, the group that we were all together with, you know, will be forever a part of their lives. And with that, there is a... Ah, now let's talk about more silly stuff, because that no, was way too there, serious. that was a, I really liked it, but you wrote a foreword of a book that just was released about the championship and basically what he just said, and it is very powerful. It's only like, his foreword is only like three pages, and I cried at the end. So, yeah, for those you're, of you... Yeah, you're kind of an emotional person, though, Al. I am. Yeah, I am. she's kind of an emotional person. It's like weird, like, like it could be, you know, those Sarah McLaughlin commercials late at night where they have the dog. Uh, oh, this is so terrible. Yeah, no, we can't sing. Don't I'm not that. a singer either. No. Um, oh, now Sarah. But with that, she's got a voice of an angel. Jeez. <laughs> on behalf of us both, I will apologize for Richard's inability to answer everyone's questions today. Or Obviously, focus. he was very, yeah, very short fuse. But next time, there will be a next time. Hey.
if you like this and you add a goofball named Channing, it's called the Road Tripping Podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe. We love you. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs>